Welcome everyone. Welcome to Adobe InDesign Live. That's right. It's Tuesday, that time of day for another InDesign Live tutorial. My name is Terry White. It'll be my pleasure to take you through a quick tutorial on how you might design a movie poster. We just had the Golden Globes. Next up are the Oscars. And of course, movie posters are all the rage. So we're going to do a fictitious one, of course, based on a movie that doesn't exist but you'll get an idea of how you might design one in the future. <clears throat> so I see people jumping in the room already. Hello, uh, is it Isa or Isa? Uh, Edwin, Victoria, welcome everyone, and welcome everyone else is soon to come in or at least uh, soon to watch this in the not-too-distant future. Um, wow, my camera kind of sped up there for a second. That was weird. All right, anyway. Uh, hopefully this will continue at a normal pace. So with that said, uh, thanks everyone for joining me and let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So let's um, <clears throat> switch over to the computer. And of course I've got InDesign CC running in the background. Uh, thanks Edwin, I appreciate it. And Ari and Thomas, or Timothy I should say, and Lee and Linda, welcome everyone, hello. All right, so I've got InDesign CC latest version open in the background here. And what I'm going to do, of course, is create a brand new document. I normally start these off with a new document or a template whenever possible. So that way you guys can see the entire process from scratch. So I've got InDesign CC open here. I'm just going to go ahead and say create new. Uh, it's going to ask me for a size. I've actually got a size dialed in here. So movie posters, standard movie posters here in the U.S., are 27 inches wide by 40 inches tall. Of course, you can make this any size you want, uh, especially if it's not going to be for a real poster. But uh, I decided to go ahead and keep to the standard movie sizes here of 27 by 40. And it's just going to be one page, one column. The margin really doesn't matter. Actually, if I were really doing this for print, I would do it as a full bleed so that I can bleed my images and, and background off the edge. So if I were going to have this printed, I'd have it trimmed down to 27 by 40. That way I would have the full size of the paper. But let's go ahead and just say that we're going to do 27 to 40 borderless. And let's go ahead and hit create, and that will create our empty document. Now I've already got uh, everything I'm going to need from a image perspective in a library. And uh, you'll be able to pick up on the theme of this movie poster pretty quickly. But let's also switch over to the layers panel because uh, in my layers panel, I'm going to do something uh, specific to these layers. I'm going to have at least three layers, of course, with all their sub layers. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a frame tool or actually a, a um, shape tool. I'm just going to create a nice big rectangle the size of my paper, size of my document. And I'm just going to fill that with black. That will serve as my background. All right, so now that I got my background in place, I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer into a layer called background. And I'm going to lock that layer. So that way I'm not accidentally messing with that black um, frame that's on the background. Then I'm going to, of course, create a new layer. That new layer, I'm going to call this layer photos. And might as well get the other layer out of the way. I'm just going to go ahead and create that layer. And we're going to say that this layer is going to be called uh, text. That'll be our text layer. So we have a background which layer which is locked with one thing on it. We have the photos layer and the text layer. So let's go to the photos layer first. And uh, we're going to drag out our first image that's going to go on the photo layer. And this might give you a clue as to what the poster or what the movie is going to be about. Let's just go ahead and make this full, full width of the page. And if you have not been paying attention, there was a new Star Wars movie out. And this, of course, is the Death Star. Now, I have to uh, give credit as to where these Star Wars images are coming from. Uh, these are coming from a company called Pixel Squid. Giving a shout out to Pixel Squid uh, for giving me access to these images. Uh, they sell 3D images that you can use inside of Photoshop. Um, you, know, you can turn them around inside of Photoshop and composite them royalty free. So they create all this stuff from scratch, and I'm just borrowing it from them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and say that I want high quality display. It's not going to make a big difference here. And typically, the problem is bringing these images in. They're coming in at their full exposure and brightness and all that. And Dave Clayton's in the house. Hey, Dave, you're going to you're going to love this part because uh, you're going to be in it later. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's let's go ahead and uh, let's tone this down a bit. And one of the th things we can do 
is first and foremost, you can just lower the opacity of objects inside of um, InDesign. So if you just kind of wanted to fade that out into the background against the black, you could, but that's not quite what I want. What I'm going to do instead is go to my object menu, come down to effects and come down to the gradient feather. So there's a directional feather, a basic feather, Satan and the gradient feather. So let's go to gradient feather and we're just going to go ahead and twirl that down. Do it from so like, like about a 50 degree angle there. And I can also adjust how this looks. So for example, if we preview that, I can make that uh, show up. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I want to move it, not to duplicate it. There we go. Make it lighter, but I'm, I want to go the other way. I want to make it darker and more ominous, 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 yes, ominous. And maybe not quite that dark. And we'll fade it back that way some more. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Just kind of like off in the distance, off in space, kind of making that look uh, faded back just a bit, maybe even a little bit more. Okay. And again, these are all non-destructive effects, so you can always go back in and retweak it if you don't like it. Let's go ahead and click OK. Um, all right. So we got that background item in place on our photos layer. The next one, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in some of the ships. So let's go ahead and bring in the next wing. And of course, these are all, now I didn't have to cut these out. These are all cut out automatically from uh, Pixel Squid. So you don't have to even mask them. They're already masked for you. And you can, I, I pointed it up before I made a Photoshop file. So it was just in the orientation I wanted it to be. And that's another good advantage to this is that you can rotate them in 3D space and then save them out as PSDs or layers and use them uh, right out of the Pixel Squid library. So we're going to go ahead and bring in our TIE Fighter here, our special... Kylo Ren TIE Fighter. Let's put that one up there. All right, pretty cool. Now it's time to bring in the stars of the show and the stars of the movie. Um, so, <laughs> Direct Hit can only just <laughs> can destroy that. You are absolutely right, Edwin. All right, so let's bring in um, one of our stars, Victoria Pavlov, the Photoshop artist, has lent, she lent me an image to use. And I'm honored to be able to have her. She, she's already decked out in the Photoshop gear. She's already got her uniform on. So that made it an easy choice to bring this in. You will not find this on Pixel Squid, but I wish it were. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put her in place. And then we're going to do this, give her the same kind of treatment. We're going to go to uh, Effects, Gradient, Feather. And we're going to do this from the bottom. There we go. So she's kind of fading out or fading in from the bottom up. Uh, so again, same kind of thing. We can choose how much of that gets faded. I would say right about there is what I'm looking for. We'll click OK. And we got that in place as well. Now, of course, we have to give her a Photoshop type weapon. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you know that can be one and one thing only. For a Jedi, that would be a lightsaber. So let's bring that lightsaber in. Uh, and again, these all come from Pixel Squid. I'm just, I wish I had rotated that one first, but I didn't. So I'm having to rotate it here in InDesign, which is not a problem. Let's go ahead and put that near her hand. If I were going to put it in her hand, I'd actually do that in Photoshop, but that'll be close enough for what we're going to do. I can also make that a little bit bigger. There we go. More like that and just kind of move it up a bit. So we're just, at this point, we're just placing our photos. Now, at any point that you want to look at this without all these, um, uh, frame edges around it just as long as you're not in the text tool you can hit the letter w and that'll show you preview mode so you can get an idea of what it's looking like so far without having to see all the frame edges hey amber amber just joined uh, joined as far as uh, or as well as uh ronald welcome everyone we are doing a movie poster uh kind of a knockoff on star wars okay so we got, we got some other stars now these are just uh guys I photographed in the past, so they're, they're models. I have their model releases, so we're going to use them. I'm just going to bring him in. He's going to be one of our heroes. And we'll bring in our other hero, Trevor, here. Now, Trevor, I didn't cut him out quite the same size, so i got to make his bigger first. Ooh, I did it pretty much the right size that time. Right, yeah, it's about the right size. We'll move him over here. And I've got a lot more of his body showing, so we're just going to use the frame and in InDesign to kind of crop that off a bit. And I thought I had darkened his collar a bit more, but anyway, he's got on regular street clothes, regular shirt there. Uh, let's go ahead and scale him down just a bit more. I don't want his head to be cut off by the lightsaber. And 
Let's get them down a bit more, a bit more. And there we go. Okay, next we'll bring in another um, pixel squid object. We'll bring in something from uh, Star Wars, Kylo Ren's mask. And we'll just go ahead and drop that right about here. And I'm not holding down the shift key. So when you place an object, whether you drag it in from a library or place it using the file menu in InDesign, it's automatically on a scale proportionally that first time without having to hold down anything. So same kind of thing. I don't want the mask to be in its full glory. I would love to do another gradient feather on that. So we'll go to ob objects, effects, gradient feather. We'll do that from the bottom, just like we did everything else. And we'll kind of just pull that over. Ooh, not so much, not so much, not so much. Just kind of fading out the bottom of that. So this is what we got so far. Hit the letter W so we can see it all. And as you can see, I'm leaving space down at the bottom for my text. So this is all working out so far so good. I think I've got all the objects I want to use. So now we're going to bring in our movie title. Now, of course, you could type this text inside of InDesign, but then you'd be limited a little bit by just fonts and, and, a, and a few effects in InDesign. So I created this text actually as a Photoshop object. I'm just going to bring it in from my library and we'll put it right about there. Photoshop Wars, yay. All right, we'll center that. Ooh, not center it there, though. We want to center it on the page. There we go. And push that up a bit. All right. So now that's technically a photo, but it is also text. But I'm going to keep it on the photos layer, and I'm going to switch over to the text layer so I can put in my type. So now at this point, um, the the main, and this is probably the bulk of the the tutorial for movie posters. It's really not so much about the image, although that's the design part but the, the actual mechanics of it is really all that type at the bottom. That's what's the time consuming part because usually the composite image is done all as one piece inside of Photoshop. You're usually not putting it together like this uh, inside of InDesign, although I proved that you just, you can, as long as you have the right objects to put together. Um, so with that said, since I'm going to be, um, uh, putting the text in and that's all that you know all the credits down at the bottom for the movie poster There's a couple of different ways to do that now Of course you can just draw a text frame and you can tab over all the items as you type them That's certainly one way to do it. You can create a text frame for each individual name So that way you have the flexibility of moving things around That's certainly a way to do it. You can also create a table, which is the way we're going to do it that's another way to do it. Stephanie Carr. Wow, I haven't seen that name in a while. Hey, Stephanie Carr, Ari, and uh, anyone else I might have missed, Corey. Welcome, everyone. All right, so the next thing you want to do is... What is this? Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to uh, go ahead and create that table. And again, it, it, this, this is not a... You have to do it in a table. You can do it any way you want. It's just the table will make it easier in a lot of ways to keep the type aligned and keep it organized. Sometimes it won't. So it just really depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a table. I'm going to go up to my table menu. I'm on the text layer. And I'm going to go ahead and say create table. And luckily the table will allow me to create as many rows as I think I'm going to need and as many columns as I think I'm going to need. I think I'm going to need four rows to start and seven columns to start. You can always add more later or delete the ones you don't use. So let's go ahead and say create a table. And also in the current versions of InDesign, you don't you used to have to create a text frame first and put the table inside of it. You don't have to do any of that anymore. You can just go ahead and generate the table. And if I click without, I could either click or drag, but if I just click, it'll automatically make the table take up whatever space is left. In other words, wherever I clicked it, it will automatically fill up from that spot to the bottom of the page. So it basically built this table um, all set and ready to go. I can move it up a little bit, but that's my seven columns across and my four rows down. Now I already know that for the last two rows, I want those to be two separate rows that I'm going to merge. Actually, I could make it one. I could make it one big cell. All right, I'm going to make it one big cell. I was going to merge it into two separate rows, but I'll make it one big cell. So that last piece is just going to be one big cell at the bottom. And then we've still got our seven across on two rows now. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll work out. Okay, 
So now um, I, I'm going to do a couple things to format the to, to set the basis for the table first to get the formatting the way I want. So that way I'm not having to keep continuously go back and do it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the table. Now, if you highlight it pointing down, that selects a single column. If you highlight it pointing to the left, that selects a single row. If you get it up in the corner, like so, that selects the entire table. So that way you get the entire table selected. So now when you go to your table um, cell options and you go to text, you can say that I don't want to align my text at the top, which normally you might want to. But in this case, I want to align the text to the bottom. You'll see why in a moment. And um, that's pretty much it. Now, the only other thing I would do is for the strokes and fills is I would go ahead and set those to zeros because I don't need to see the lines, even though on this black background, we wouldn't see them anyway. But um, just to turn off all the lines going horizontally and vertically, they'll still be there for um, design purposes, but you just won't see them when you're in preview mode anymore. Okay, so I'm going to, for this first cell, I'm gonna type a capital letter A. And I'm gonna highlight that letter A, and I've got a style saved, I got two text style, two paragraph style saved, small name, big name. So I'm just do small name, and I'm gonna write justify that. So uh, let's zoom into it so we can see what we're doing. So we got our A, and then I'm, I'm jump over to the next cell, I'm gonna type in Terry, white of course it's all black type so we can't see it and then I'm going to switch over to my other style in my CC libraries called big name I got two big names but that's the one I want Oop, typed extra J there all right Terry white and we're gonna go here and type in, in case you haven't guessed that is going to say uh, actually, I can grab it from the uh, paragraph panel now, but Terry Light Production. Now, I'm mixing the font here. Of course, you don't have to do that, but I'm basically saying that I want uh, Terry White to be in Trojan um, Pro 3 regular, which is a type kit font, and I want my A and my, my production to be Proxima Nova Thin. Uh, you can do it all as one type. You can use whatever font you want. Trojan Pro, if I'm saying that correctly, is a big heavily used name, or I'm sorry, font in these kind of credits under movie posters. So if you want to know like which one do people use the most, it's this one, uh, but you can use whatever you want, your poster. All right, next we're gonna do, uh, instead of bad robot, we're gonna do good robot because we don't want a copyright violation. Good robot production, all right. All right, and we'll do small name there. And uh, now we can just hit tab, and then we can go over and start putting in our name. So our first star will be And of course, big name, big four. Now, you see, you might run into names that are too long. So what are my options? I can either try, I can maybe make that text a little smaller or a little, or current it or track it a little closer to each other. Or I can make the cell bigger. If I, if I know I'm just gonna have big names there. I could do something like that. Uh, I'm sorry, one more time. Something like that to make the name fit. Holding down my shift key, moving just that one bar without having to move the rest. Uh, so Victoria Pavlov is, is one of our stars. Um, I know this is another big name. All right, big name there, Julian Cost. See, that fits perfectly, and then we just keep going. So we got Julian Cost. I uh, saw him earlier in the chat. Of course, we could not do a movie poster without Dave Clayton. And we've got, of course, big name in Photoshop, Scott Kelby. And we got Corey Barker. I think I spelled that right. I did. And then we just keep going. Kaylee. Greer, big name, and uh, let's see here, we'll do Glenn, Dewis, big name, and then we'll go to a longer name, so I'm kind of keeping the longer names <laughs> in the same spot, although technically you'd probably have to put them in the order of their 
uh, success. In other words, who gets top billing? Christina Shirk. And let's see, we'll do one more. Frank door. Oh, that one doesn't fit. All right, let's, let's try this first. Still not enough. Bring it down just a hair. Okay, Frank door off. You're going to get a slightly smaller text treatment. All right, so now we're down to the one frame that's got, uh, or the one uh, cell that goes all the way across. So we're going to just go ahead and, and put in, um, let's do May 30. And we'll do big name, but I don't want that to be big name. Instead, we're going to center that. And we're going to highlight that. And we're going to do, um, instead of Trojan, we'll do Proxima. Proxima Nova Black, maybe. Yeah, it looks like a movie poster text. And then, of course, we'd have all of our, um, pull it down a bit. We have all of our, um, you know, here, let's do this. In 3D real 3d and imax 3d and then we're going to of course format that a little bit differently we'll go in and make that um uh i'm forgetting the name of this we'll make that uh, small caps yes and let's go in and also change our change that a bit Okay, so we got our, our text styled, our movie posters done. We're out of time anyway, but you get the idea. So you too can make a movie poster styled in InDesign. All right, Carlos thinks is great. Denise says hi. Ben says good. Hello, everyone, and I uh, hope you like this. So just a quick way to make a movie poster or a concept for a movie poster right here in InDesign CC. Um, one other tip I will give you for the text formatting. I did it, but I didn't show it. So not only did I choose the Trojan font and make it bigger, but um, movie posters tend to have taller text. So what I did, we zoom in on this, I made the height of that character 200%. So that's not how tall the Trojan Pro normally is. At 100%, it would be more like this. So see, that's the way it normally looks. But movie posters, they use that tall, skinny type all the time. So you can quickly achieve that effect just by simply changing uh, the character height from 100 to 200. And what I did on the production is I made, uh, or all the small type, smaller type, I should say, I made that 150. So you have 200, 150, 200, 150, 200, 150, all the way down. All right. Uh, so just another quick tip on how you might format that. All right, that's our poster. And of course, at this point, we could print it. And most importantly, we could export it as a PDF directly from uh, InDesign. So let's make that a press-ready PDF. Make it a Star Wars, or not Star Wars, Photoshop Wars, poster 2018. And we'll save that to our Creative Cloud files in Adobe Live. Yes, save, export. All right. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. If you're not done learning, meaning if you want more stuff, you can get more stuff today. As a matter of fact, um, yeah, today's Tuesday. So going on right now um, over at behance.net slash live, you can learn all about illustration, vector work. So um, we do our three-day streams once a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This week's um, free three-day stream kicked off today, 9 to 5 Pacific time, is all about vector illustration. So head over to behance.net slash live, and you guys can go ahead and take a look. Uh, Edwin, sorry, no prizes here, but if you head over to Adobe uh, or Adobe Live at behance.net slash live, they are giving away prizes. So you guys can get prizes there. All right, uh, so... Your students are going to love this. Thanks, Denise. I hope they do. And, and you know, share, share with me some of the posters they come up with after watching this. I would love to see them. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. Hope you got something out of this. And go make your posters. Cheers, everybody.